Hey, good morning, and happy Mother's Day. Man, I hope you're having a good day so far, moms. I, we're so thankful for you, and we just want to, to encourage you and bless you today. But welcome to the service. And we have gathered our, we're gathering our hearts to, to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so as we prepare for that, I want to just ask that you would just humble your heart with me. And we're going to pray for a few things, and then we're going to move in to worship with the worship team. Would you? Bow with me in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thanks for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your gentleness, your love. Thank you for loving us through our moms and, and, and nurturing us and encouraging us. Thank you for Jesus and for what your Son has done for each and every one of us. We lift our moms to you and ask that you be a blessing to them. We ask that you'd encourage them. We also ask that, Lord, that you'd be with us. Uh, with those who are being affected so severely by the virus that's taking a hold across the world. And ask that, Father, that you in, in, in your might and your power would care for each one who has been infected with this virus and ask that you would just help them to heal very quickly. Those who are in hospitals, that, Lord, that you would help the doctors and nurses to care for them and help them to find answers. We ask that you'd be with those who have lost loved ones through this terrible time and ask that you would encourage them that you would hold them fast and, and give them comfort, a strength, a, a, a Lord, a presence that's a heavenly. Thank you, Lord. And we ask that you would, <clears throat> that you would be with those who's been out, who have been out of work, and we pray that you would intervene in their behalf, that you would take care of them financially, those whose businesses have been affected. And we ask that, God, that you would help things to work out well for them, and that, Lord, that they would be able to lean into you and, and gain strength because your presence is with them day by day and moment by moment. I also ask that, Lord, in these times when we worship you, that you would help us, Lord, as we, we sing, that our words would come deep from our hearts and that it would honor you and glorify you. I also pray that, God, that you would help us through this time to become the people that you want us to be. We have friends and family who are hurting physically and emotionally and in various ways. And we pray your intervention would take place in lives. But as, as you do, we ask that, Lord, our life would bring honor and glory and praise to you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.
the king of my heart. Be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, always by song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow. Thank you for worshiping the Lord with the, the worship team, and thank you, worship team, for leading us into that time of, of drawing close to the Lord. And I, I want to ask you a question in just a moment, but I want to I want to just say thank you to our moms one more time and, and point out something really important. Moms, if you haven't already been to your front porch this morning, maybe you want to take some time and just get up and run and then run back because you don't want to miss any of this, of course. But the, the church has had some men going around this morning, men with their children, putting uh, gifts, Mother's Day gifts from the church on your, um, your porch. So if you're a mom from the church, just know that there's something there on your, your porch today. Um, I wanted, that question I want to ask you is, how does God see you and me? How does he see you and me? Does he see us as bums? Or does he see us as something really special? You see, I believe, because of what the Word of God says, that God sees us as something really special. He calls us his children. And, and, and because we are his children, he looks at us with eyes that love us and care for us. That's why he sent his son. And so after the few past few weeks, I, when we've been talking, we've been looking at some things about gazing at Jesus, looking at him and examining who he is and, and what his life really represented here on earth. Gazing at what he did on the cross and gazing at what happened in the tomb and he is no longer in the tomb. Gazing at his, his character and what happened as he 
leading up to the, the cross and then after the cross and gazing at him even every single day as he takes care of our needs and watches over us. We've learned in the past few messages that God actually, God, God through Jesus knit us together in our mother's womb. He loves us so much, he sent his son. He sent Jesus, that, that one who was with God in the beginning, who we learned was there with him in the beginning, and through Jesus, God spoke and everything became. Everything was created, everything was put together, and God knit us together in our mother's womb through Jesus. We also heard that God determined that Jesus was an heir, an heir to all things, all things. And because he calls us his children, he, joined, he gathers us in and we become joint heirs with Jesus in all things as well. That means that I get to celebrate life here on earth. I get to praise the Lord. I get to, to enjoy an exciting life. I get to be blessed by his presence. Oh yeah, there's struggles, there's difficulties, there's pressures, but there are also joy and comfort and peace and strength. Because we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. God thinks pretty highly of us. It's, <clears throat> it, it truly is worth each and every one of us. Not only examining who Jesus is, but receiving him. And then turning around and giving ourselves to him. You can probably see already that I, there's some things on the table here that haven't been here in the past. And there, there's something the same about each one of these items right here. All of these five pieces have something in common, right? They're, they're the same color, right? No, no, not the same color. They're not the same shape. They're all glass. That's what it is. They're all made of glass. Glass is a pretty interesting piece. It can be shaped into various things, a little vase. I, I don't know if what is normally in this, but it could be a candy jar. It could hold little objects, thumbtacks, nails, those kinds of things could be in there. Here's a here's another perhaps vase. Here's here's an item. Oh this this piece of this piece of glass is used to go in the oven. It's, it's used to, to bake things in, to cook our food in. Glass is really unique because it's an object that's, that is, is uh, made with sand. Two, two things go into to glass, sand and heat. Oh, for those of you who are chemists in the audience out there somewhere, you know, I understand there's all different types of sands. There's sands that are mixed with this and sands that are mixed with that. But the basis for glass is sand and heat. Lots and lots and lots of heat. Sand doesn't melt, doesn't become molten until it's 3,090 degrees centigrade. Or excuse me, Fahrenheit. 3,090 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty warm. Your oven doesn't get that hot. At least if it does, you need to find a different oven. Um, <clears throat> but I just want to, to remind you that glass... It doesn't just get this shape. You just throw some sand in a thing and something and you heat it up and it becomes this. No, you have to add a little blue to make this. But glass will come out just like this without any additives. These, there's two things in this. There's sand and heat. That's it. Pretty interesting. It looks like a solid. It acts like a solid. It is solid. In fact, glass can protect us. Those of you who have driven an automobile, how many of you have driven a car? You have, you have a windshield, right? And that glass protects you from all the bugs and all of the things that are coming at you as you're driving down the road. You know, there's a story that says, how do you, or a question, how do you tell a happy biker you count the bugs between their teeth? Well, that's why we have windshields, right? We have windshields to keep those bugs away from us, to protect us. Oh, there's, there's bulletproof gla glass and all those kinds of things. But the reality about glass is it really isn't a solid. It's a weird 
weird liquid. If you take it and you look at it through a microscope and you check it out, you'll find that it's a liquid. You find that a liquid can't be a liquid. Well, that's what the things that I read about it says. It's a liquid. Amazing to me. Amazing. Now, I have another item that's on the table here. Now, this piece is a little different from the other ones. This piece is called crystal. This piece is called lead crystal. And there's something different about lead crystal than there is about other glasses. It has a third ingredient. That third ingredient happens to be, of course, lead. And when the sand has been melted in that molten state, adding lead into it, in order to be called lead crystal, it has to have 24% of the, the uh, uh, material has to be lead. And <clears throat> when you add that lead and then it begins to cool and it's spun, it can be spun into thinner and thinner and thinner shapes and still hold that shape without breaking, which means the lead helps it to be stronger, more durable, more, more firm. And that's one of the things that's really special, really special about crystal, is that it can be thinner, it can be, it's a beautiful glass. However, it's pretty difficult to discern between some glass and some crystal. But you can discern it by seeing how tough and strong it really is. Now, why did I talk about glass in a sermon. Well, here's, here's my thought. Every piece of this that's here is glass. But this piece is called crystal. So every piece of crystal is glass, but not every piece of glass is crystal. There's an extra item in crystal, the lead, that gives it strength and durability. Now, I always want to say, this is Mother's Day. And, of course, we want to thank all our mothers for the love and acceptance that you bring into our world. And I want to suggest to you that all moms are women, but not all women are moms. The difference lies in the fact that there is an additional ingredient in someone who's a mom. Mothers have the added ingredient of giving birth to a child, carrying the child, labor, delivery, then nurturing that child, changing their, their diapers, feeding them, caring for them when they're sick and when they're injured, helping them and taking care of them, keeping them from being injured, all of those things in the mother added to what's already there as a woman makes her more durable, stronger. Yeah, there is some frail, some fragile portions, but it's she becomes stronger under pressure. When the when the heat is on, she is stronger. Well, by all means, you know the old story, you know, you, you don't want to get <clears throat> in the way of a bear, a, a mama bear and her cubs, and you don't want to get in the way of a mama human and her baby cubs, because sh you just don't want to. It will hurt you, not them, um, because they're going to take care of them, because they love them, because they've been through so much with them, because they struggled to give birth to them. Moms have something special added into their lives. And so the text for today, as we read it, I want to invite you to listen to especially the very first verse of this text. This text comes from a, a long script verse of scripture, Proverbs chapter 31. Starting from the very beginning of that chapter, it's talking about the virtuous wife. It's talking about how how all of the things that are in this virtuous wife and all of the things that she represents are what's represented in her life. And as the list comes to a close, you get down to verse 28. It begins to speak more specifically 
about the one who is also a mother. So pay attention to verse 28 as we begin. The, the, word, <clears throat> the word says, Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. I want to point out that this it's changing subjects, not from just the wife. It's now saying this mother. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will, great, will be greatly praised. Okay? Her children bless her. Listen to what it says in Leviticus 19.3. It says, each of you must show great respect for your mother. You need to show great, great respect for your mother. It says in Ephesians 6, 1 and through, through 3, it says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Oh, listen up, children. How many of you are children? Every one of you are children. Every one of you have parents. Every one. doesn't matter your age. doesn't matter your height. It doesn't matter how big you are. It, you've been born. You are a child of someone. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on this earth. So he's saying, don't think about your mom and then just write it in a card and tell her how great she is. Oh, that's important. Do that. If your children who are under the age of 12 or under the age of 22, <clears throat> I don't care how old you are, take, a, take something and make a card and write, into your, write to your mom and tell her how much you love her because of all the great things she's done. Don't just say because of all the great things you've done. Tell her the great things she's done. But there's more to it than that. Because look at what it says. Verse 28, once again, children, her children stand and bless her. The, the idea is, is that the, the children stand up and tell other people about how great their mother is. Man, you don't know how great my mom is. My mom, she would go out of her way to take care of me in this way, in this way, in this way. My mom would, would go out of her way. She would drive me to football practice. She would drive back and pick me up from football practice. She would take, in, in the summertime, that meant she had to take me in the morning and then come and get me in the morning. And then it meant that in the afternoon, she had to take me in the afternoon and come and get me in the afternoon. Also, I could go out and play on the stupid football field. Well, I didn't think it was stupid. I'm pretty sure my mom did, though. But she did that because that's what I wanted to do, and she cared so much. So my mom sacrificed herself and her wants so that she could help me have some of my wants. I'm just saying, that's one thing. What else is there? What is there that you need to tell others about how great your mom is? Tell other people, it says. <clears throat> and then it goes on, and it gets to the next phrase. Her husband praises her. Oh my, her husband praises her. We don't just as husbands say, man, my wife, I have a great wife. Look what it says in verse 29. You see, verse 28 says her husband praises her, and then there's cold. That means the next phrase, the next thing that's said, talks about what was said just before the code. So let's look and see what it says in verse 29. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. So husbands, we need to be telling our wives, there's many others out there, but you're the best. You're the best. God put you together in such a wonderful way. I, I am blessed to have you as my wife. You take care of our children. You bless our children. You care for our children. You raise our children. But bless your wife. Praise her. 
It says in Ephesians 5.25, for husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her. He gave up his life for her. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. Then the next phrase, a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. <clears throat> Women who love the Lord, they, they deserve, they, they have what it takes to be, they're praiseworthy, if you will, because of her fear of the Lord, her reverence, her submissive relationship with the Lord Almighty. And I just want to encourage you, moms, if, you are, if you're walking with God, He looks at you, and He wants to lift you up and bless you and encourage you. As we learned last week, the Father created everything that was made through Jesus. Jesus was involved in it all. When Jesus was on earth in physical form, He spent time he spent time with people in various ways. Yes, he did take time for the Father to spend with him, to talk to him, and listen to him, and learn from him. But Jesus also walked through life with people because he is relational more than, <clears throat> more than that, however, is the fact that Jesus is love. Now let me just read something I, I, I wrote down here about Jesus. And I think you can see and hear the same thing about moms. Listen to what these words say, because these are all statements or facts that you'll find in the Word of God. When, when Jesus was with his disciples, Jesus prayed for them. He ate with them. He got baptized with them. He healed them. He rode in a ship during a storm with them. He did all of those things. Moms do all of those things with their children. Man, has your mom ever ridden through a storm with you? Moms, have you ever ridden through a storm with one of your children? Then it goes on. My, my list goes on. He prayed for them. He taught them. He fed them. He ate their cooking. <laughs> he answered their questions. He settled their arguments. He prayed for them. Oh, I think I said that a couple times already, right? Moms, do you pray for your kids? I think Jesus was setting an example for us as he cared for his disciples. He wants us to care for our children. He corrected them. He walked on water to get to them. He encouraged them, and he prayed for them. The mother who fears the Lord <clears throat> does those very same things with and for their children. They do them because the love of God flows through their hearts to the ones he has placed in her hands. Mothers, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all you do. May God bless your day and even your coming year. May you be blessed on this day. You are loved. You are loved by your children, by your husbands, by your God, and by us. May God bless you and give you strength. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessings to us. Thank you for, for mothers who like this crystal we talked about is stronger because of the added responsibility, the added ingredient in their life, the, the, the child that they bore, that they nurtured, that they served, that they cared for, that they prayed for. Thank you, Lord, for the moms in this, <clears throat> in this day, and I pray that, Lord, your hand would be a blessing and an encouragement to them. Help us, each and every one of us. Because, Lord, if we're a human being, we're a child. And if our parents are all gone, if they have left this world, help us to reach out and bless another mom, somebody else who is very precious to us and special to us. But, Lord, I pray that, God, you would use us 
to bless our spouses as well. Us men, to rise up today and tell others about wonderful our spouses and to tell our spouse how much we love them, care for them, thankful for them, and we want to bless them. We give you praise, Father, for giving us so much. And we do this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you and may he strengthen you as you go through this day. Stay strong, stay healthy. God bless. There is a place Baby.